with Spiro Kolaris and Alan, Alan Cantwell. Cantwell in the Autonomous Living Technologies booth. And Spiro is going to be demonstrating for us. And I, I should tell you, this is a podcast, an audio podcast and video. So I'm going to probably stop you and describe things that I'm seeing a little bit here. So uh, you're in a wheelchair, correct? I am. I was diagnosed with ALS in 2019. I've lost the use of my hands and upper limbs. Okay, so you got on a pair of glasses and some little transmitter receiver sort of thingy is, is connected to your glasses and you're actually going to be controlling this Mac out in front of us, is that correct? Um, it's the beginning. Um, I can control my Mac, I can control Windows, iOS, and Android devices, and my goal, when I'm at home, I want to be able to get up in the morning and do everything I want to do without saying, honey. <laughs> it, it's strange. I found that people with disabilities want to do the same things everybody else wants to do, which is weird, right? Who thought? Who knew? It all started with the fight over the remote control for the TV. Um, I'm a sports junkie, and she's not. <laughs> that's how it got started. Okay, so uh, can you tell me, what is the thing called that's on your glasses? Um, we have built a device that we call Kato. Kato, C-A-T-O? Yes, and Kato is an assistant for me to help me do everything. It's originally inspired by the character Bruce Lee played in the Green Hornet. Oh, right, right, right. So, okay. So Kato is a psychic. Um, on the screen, you can see when I move. So you're moving your head back and forth, and we're seeing a yellow circle with, a, with an arrow in it move as you move your head. That's right. And so it's, it's not following your eye gaze, it's following your head motion, correct? It tracks motion. Um, eye gaze is an important technology, but we're an alternative. And the thing I can do um, with my device, um, in my environment at home, I want to work on a multi-screen setup with an iPad, with my main computer, and with my auxiliary computer. So I'm always moving screen to screen, and there's no iGate system that can do that. So this is working over Bluetooth, is that right? It connects by Bluetooth, but the the key thing is driving it is motion, an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and machine learning software we wrote that can learn gestures. So if I nod my head or tip my head, I can trigger a command. I want to be able to use this with people that have different disabilities. So it can connect not only in my head, but also on my foot, on an elbow, or another body part. So whatever somebody's got, let's find a way to transmit that information? You got it. And I want to show you how to tap and raise a lift. Okay. If, if I wanted to get in and out of bed, is a cat ready to go? All right. So what's he doing over there? He's got a cat? Yeah. Okay, I don't understand what's going on, but we've got a cat in a basket that he's hung over. So there's. This is very confusing. <laughs> but I'm sure this will be uh, obvious in a moment what you're about to do. Okay, this cat is going up and down on a tether. 
it's a uh, little stuffed cat. It's not a real cat for the listening audience. They aren't. No animals were harmed in the making of this movie. The same device I'm using to control my TV and my computer, I can use to control a lift and my bed. Oh, no way. No way. Oh, that's, that's cool. That's the cool part. I don't need to keep switching technology to do different kinds of things. If I have Alexa, I can use the Alexa on-screen app because she doesn't understand my voice anymore. Oh, okay, right. So for somebody non-verbal, we can now provide control over computer-based and other devices from one interface. That's crazy. So you can make the cat go up and down right now for us? I can right now here yeah, because we have it set up on different devices. For oh, okay. the show, we want to do two samples at once. Okay. But you can see over there, the device Alan is using is the same as the device on my glasses. Oh, okay. So I'm going to step over to Alan for a second. So Alan has the uh, Cato in his hand and... Oh, wait, we're interfering. They're both... Both Kato's are controlling things? No. Um, he was paying attention to you. Oh, and he didn't notice he wound up the cat too much? Huh? <laughs> okay, this is a funny demo. I like this. Okay, so he's tapping the uh, Kato and it's going up and down. A single tap is bringing it up, a double tap takes it down, and a triple tap stops it. Okay, okay, I see what you're doing there. All right, I want to see you open something on your Mac here, Spiro. Okay. Prove it to me. I'll prove it. Um, first, I'm going to turn on my camera. Okay, so he just reached up and tapped on a Alt-P for the uh, camera? Yes, in the Mac world, they have something called alternate points of actions. And you can see stuff moving back and forth. Oh, you're doing that on purpose, uh, no, screw I'm windows? Not. Oh, <laughs> I'm talking. Oh, uh, and it's reacting to you? I turn them off when I want to talk because opening my mouth with a camera on is a left click. Oh, okay. So with the camera on, that's now you're, it's looking at you with this transmitter and, and the yes. two are talking? Oh, wow. And now, if I turn the camera on, you'll see it turn on. Okay, how about if I do the talking and I'll watch what you're doing. So, expression tracking restored, it said. So you're watching a basketball game is what I see you doing. <laughs> All right, he's went over and he opened Chrome. And uh, now he's going over, oh, he's going to move the, cr oh, he's grabbing a window and moving it. Oh, wow. That's all with just gestures with, with his head. So now he's gone over, he's got Gmail up. We're going to read his personal email here in just a second. See, I can say whatever I want. Oh, he's composing. He's composing an email. Wow. And he's about to uh, type in a, uh, a subject for this. And he, so he's got an on-screen keyboard, and he's looking around, and we see a, 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 a yellow uh, circle with a, an arrow, and he just wrote, thank you. Wow, I didn't even notice how fast you did that. That must be with some type ahead project, uh, prediction. All right. This is, yeah, you are absolutely doing everything uh, I would do, except you're spelling better than I do, I think, the way you're doing it. Okay, this interview, uh-oh, is terrible. What is he going to type? So far it says this interview is, all right, yeah. Yeah. oh well, we, he, he called it. We'll never know what he was going to say. <laughs> all right, uh-oh, you're not bringing up Photoshop there. Okay. Um, so you can watch movies on Apple TV? So I can do everything. I can bring up FaceTime. Have a FaceTime call, Zoom meetings, 
Um, wow. Yeah, you know. Put the MacBook screen halfway down. Okay. So he's closing. Oh, because it's covering up your icons, right? I make phone calls with Google Voice. Wow. He's bringing up FaceTime. Oh, there's Steve. <laughs> you need to hunker down there. Is now a good time for me to uh, ask the uh, question I was supposed to ask over here of Alan? Yeah, it sure is. All right, I'm supposed to ask Alan, what are you doing uh, for kids with Cato? Well, with kids, we're working with school systems, and in some cases it's middle school, some cases high school, even some colleges. But we help them get access to the different applications still using Cato. An environment like Spiro uses for his home lab can be applicable for kids doing their homework and their ability to access maybe social media, maybe educational tools, things like Google Classroom. And too often, what they're provided is just a single tool with a challenging access to it. So not only do we put a wireless mouse on their glasses so they can interact with the tools, um, but they can toggle between different applications they would need. Uh, many school districts in California are doing independent living labs as well. And that's where we go in with an IT environment and help simulate what somebody could do at home when the kid is home after school and help the parents understand the art of the possible there. That's, that's crazy. So um, the product is called Cato, C-A-T-O, Autonomous Living Technologies, and it's A-U-L-I dot T-E-C-H. Ollie dot tech. Is uh, Ollie dot tech. How, uh, is this for sale yet, or are you still prototyping? We just completed beta trials on the prototypes. We have a release candidate we'll do another round of beta trials with during Q2, so that'll start mid-April. And we're working specifically with school districts, with occupational therapists, assistive tech pros, as well as healthcare professionals. And assuming the beta trials go well, we should be released by the end of Q2, primarily focused on uh, healthcare professionals later in the year, direct to consumer is the hope. Okay, so yeah, starting direct to consumer might be tough because uh, you got to have somebody to train and set up and understand how exactly. it works. Exactly. So with an occupational therapy could could be the connection. Yes. This is very cool, Spirit. Sounds like this has really opened up a lot of things for you that maybe you thought were gone at this point. Um, I live my life at full speed, and that was the main motivator. Um, I don't want to slow down, and it's my little fight back against the ALS. Well, it sounds like you are, and I'm sure you're going to be successful. This is fantastic. Thank you both for meeting with us. Thank you for taking the time.